Brugia Malayi, Wikipedia article audio. Brugia Malayi is a nematode, one of the three causative agents of lymphatic filariasis in humans. Lymphatic filariasis, also known as elephantiasis, is a condition characterized by swelling of the lower limbs. The two other filarial causes of lymphatic filariasis are Wachereria bancrofti and Brugia timeri, which both differ from B. malayi morphologically, symptomatically, and in geographical extent. B. malayi is transmitted by Manzonia mosquitoes and is restricted to South and Southeast Asia. It is one of the tropical diseases targeted for elimination by the year 2020 by the World Health Organization, which has spurred vaccine and drug development, as well as new methods of vector control. History of Discovery Identification of a Distinct Parasite B. malayi was discovered in 1927 by the Dutch parasitologist Stefan Lambert Brug while working in Indonesia. It was similar to another filarial roundworm Wachereria bancrofti bancrofti. But the new species of human filaria in North Sumatra was both physiologically and morphologically distinct from the W. bancrofti microfilariae commonly found in Jakarta. Based on their resemblance and differences, the new species was named Filaria malayi. Despite epidemiological studies identifying Filaria malayi in India, Sri Lanka, China, North Vietnam, and Malaysia in the 1930s, Liechtenstein and Brugg's hypothesis was not accepted until the 1940s, when Rao and Maplestone identified two adult worms in India. Based on the similarities with W. Bancrofti, Rao, and Maplestone proposed to call the parasite Wachereria malayi. After the discovery of new species such as W. Pahangi in 1956, and W. Patei in 1958, the scientific classification was reassessed in 1960. Buckley proposed to divide the old genus Wachereria into two genera, Wachereria, and introduced a new Brugia after the original discoverer. Then Wachereria contains only W. Bancrofti, which so far has been found to infect only humans, and the Brugia genus contains B. malayi, which infects humans and animals, as well as other zoonotic species. In 1957, Two subspecies of human infecting B. malayi were discovered by Turner and Edison in Malaysia based on the observation of different patterns of microfilaria periodicity. Periodicity refers to a pronounced peak in microfilariae count during a 2-4 hour interval when microfilariae are present and detectable in the circulating blood. The basis for this phenomenon remains largely unknown. B. malayi is transmitted by a mosquito vector. The principal mosquito vectors include Manzonia, Anopheles, and Aedes mosquitoes. The geographical distribution of the disease is thus dependent on suitable mosquito breeding habitat. The accumulation of many infective mosquito bites several hundreds to thousands is required to establish infection. This is because a competent mosquito usually transmits only a few infective L3 larvae, and less than 10% of those larvae progress through all the necessary molting steps and develop into adult worms that can mate. Thus those at greatest risk for infection are individuals living in endemic areas short-term tourists are unlikely to develop lymphatic filariasis. Identification of Different Strains Development and replication of B. malayi occurs in two discrete phases, in the mosquito vector and in the human. Both stages are essential to the life cycle of the parasite. Mosquito The mosquito serves as a biological vector and intermediate host it is required for the developmental cycle and transmission of B. malayi. 4. 
the mosquito takes a human blood meal and ingests microfilarii that circulate in the human bloodstream. 5-7 In the mosquito, the microfilarii shed sheaths, penetrate the midgut, and migrate to the thoracic muscles where the microfilarii increase in size, mold, and develop into infective larvae over a span of 721 days. No multiplication or sexual reproduction of microfilarii occurs in the mosquito. 8-1 The infective larvae migrate to the salivary glands, enter the proboscis and escape onto human skin when the mosquito takes another blood meal. Transmission, Vectors and Reservoirs Human, B. Malayi undergoes further development in the human as well as sexual reproduction and egg production, 1-2 The infective larvae actively penetrate the skin through the bite hole and develop into adults in the lymphatic system over a span of 6 months. Adult worms can survive in the lymphatic system for 5-15 years, 3. The male and female adult worms mate and the females produce an average of 10,000 sheathed eggs daily. The microfilarii enter the bloodstream and exhibit nocturnal periodicity and subperiodicity. 4. Another mosquito takes a blood meal and ingests the microfilarii. Infection depends on the mosquito taking a blood meal during a periodic episode when microfilarii are present in the bloodstream. Adult worms resemble typical nematode roundworms. Long and thread-like, B. malayi and other nematode possess only longitudinal muscles and move in an S-shape motion. Adults are typically smaller than adult W. Bancrofti, though few adults have been isolated. Female adult worms are larger than male worms. B. Malayi microfilarii are 200 to 75 m in length and have a round anterior end and a pointed posterior end. The microfilarii are sheathed, which stains heavily with gemsa. The sheath is actually the egg shell, a thin layer that surrounds the egg shell as the microfilarii circulates in the bloodstream. The microfilarii retain the sheath until they are digested in the mosquito midgut. Life Cycle B. Malayi microfilarii resemble W. Bancroft T and LOA LOA microfilarii with minor differences that can aid in laboratory diagnosis. B. Malayi microfilarii can be distinguished by the non-continuous row of nuclei found in the tip of the tail. There are two terminal nuclei that are distinctly separated from the other nuclei in the tail whereas the tail of W. Bancroft T contains no nuclei and LOA LOA microfilarii nuclei form a continuous row in the tail. B. Malayi microfilarii also have a characteristic cephalic space ratio of 2 colon 1. Morphology B. Malayi is one of the causative agents of lymphatic filariasis a condition marked by infection and swelling of the lymphatic system. The disease is primarily caused by the presence of worms in the lymphatic vessels and the resulting inflammatory response of the host. Signs of infection are typically consistent with those seen in Bancroftian filariasis fever, lymphadenitis, lymphangitis, lymphedemia, and secondary bacterial infection with a few exceptions. Adult Lymphadenitis, the swelling of the lymph nodes, is a commonly recognized symptom of many diseases. It is an early manifestation of filariasis, usually occurs in the inguinal area during B. malayi infection and can occur before the worms mature. Lymphangitis is the inflammation of the lymphatic vessels in response to infection. It occurs early in the course of infection in response to worm development, molting, death, or bacterial and fungal infection. The affected lymphatic vessels become distended and tender, and the overlying skin becomes erythematous and hot. Abscess formation and ulceration of the affected lymph node occasionally occurs during B. malayi infection, 
more often than in Bancroftian filariasis. Remnants of adult worms can sometimes be found in the ulcer drainage. Microfilariae The most obvious sign of infection, elephantiasis, is the enlargement of the limbs usually the legs. A late complication of infection, elephantiasis is a form of lymphedemia and is caused by repeated inflammation of the lymphatic vessels. Repeated inflammatory reactions causes vessel dilation and thickening of the affected lymphatic vessels, which can compromise function. The lymphatic system normally functions to maintain fluid balance between tissues and the blood and serves as an integral part of the immune system. Blockage of these vessels due to inflammatory induced fibrosis, dead worms, or granulomatous reactions can interfere with normal fluid balance, thus leading to swelling in the extremities. Elephantiasis resulting from B. malayi infection typically affects the distal portions of the extremities. Unlike Bancroftian filariasis, B. malayi rarely affects genitalia and does not cause funiculitis, orchitis, epididymitis, hydrocele, or chyluria, conditions more often observed with Bancroftian infection. Secondary bacterial infection is common among patients with filariasis. Compromised immune function due to lymphatic damage in addition to lymph node ulcerations and abscesses exposure and impaired circulation due to elephantiasis can cause secondary bacterial or fungal infection. Elephantiasis, in addition to the physical burden of a swollen limb, can be a severely dehabilitating condition given bacterial infection. Part of the WHO's strategy to eliminate lymphatic filariasis targets hygiene promotion programs in order to alleviate the suffering of affected individuals. However, clinical manifestations of infection are variable and depend on several factors, including host immune system, infectious dose, and parasite strain differences. Most infections appear asymptomatic, yet vary from individual to individual. Individuals living in endemic areas with microfilaremia may never present with overt symptoms, whereas in other cases, only a few worms can exacerbate a severe inflammatory response. The development of the disease in humans, however, is not well understood. Adults typically develop worse symptoms, given the long exposure time required for infection. Infection may occur during childhood, but the disease appears to take many years to manifest. The incubation period for infection ranges from one month to two years and typically microfilariae appear before overt symptoms. Lymphedemia can develop within six months and development of elephantiasis has been reported within a year of infection among refugees, who are more immunologically naive. Men tend to develop worse symptoms than women. Tender or enlarged inguinal lymph nodes or swelling in the extremities can alert physicians or public health officials to infection. Symptoms with appropriate laboratory equipment, microscopic examination of differential morphological features of microfilariae in stained blood films can aid diagnosis in particular the examination of the tail portion, the presence of a sheath, and the size of the cephalic space. Gemsa staining will uniquely stain B. malayi sheath pink. However, Finding the microfilariae on blood films can be difficult because of the nocturnal periodicity of some forms of B. malayi. Lymphadenitis PCR-based assays are highly sensitive and can be used to monitor infections both in humans and the mosquito vectors. However, PCR assays are time-consuming, labor-intensive, and require laboratory equipment. Lymphatic filariasis mainly affects the poor, who live in areas without such resources. Nocturnal periodicity, 
microfilarii are not detectable in the blood for the majority of the day, but the microfilarial density peaks between midnight and 2 a.m. nightly, nocturnal subperiodicity, microfilarii are present in the blood at all times, but appear at greatest density between noon and 8 p.m. The ICT antigen card test is widely used in the diagnosis of W. Bancroft T, but commercial antigens of B. Malayi have not been widely available. However, new research developments have identified a recombinant antigen that is both specific and sensitive in the detection of IgG4 antibodies against B. Malayi and B. Timuri in an enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay and a immunochromatographic rapid dipstick test. However, it appears that immunoreactivity to this antigen is variable in individuals infected with other filarial nematodes. This research has led to the development of two new rapid immunochromatographic IgG4 cassette tests WB Rapid and PAN-LF Rapid which detect Bancroftian filariasis and all three species of lymphatic filariasis, respectively, with high sensitivity and selectivity. The Global Alliance to Eliminate Lymphatic Filariasis was launched by the World Health Organization in 2000 with two primary goals, one to interrupt transmission and two to alleviate the suffering of affected individuals. Mass drug treatment programs are the main strategy for interrupting parasite transmission, and morbidity management, focusing on hygiene improves the quality of life of infected individuals. The nocturnal periodic form is transmitted by Mansonia and some Anopheline mosquitoes in open swamps and rice growing areas. These mosquitoes tend to bite at night and appear to only infect humans. Natural animal infections are rare and experimental animals do not retain infection. The nocturnal subperiodic form is transmitted by Mansonia in forest swamps, where mosquitoes bite in the shade at any time. Natural zoonotic infections are common. Cats, dogs, monkeys, slow lorises, civet cats, and hamsters have all been successfully experimentally infected with B. malayi from man and may serve as important reservoirs. A goal of community-based efforts is to eliminate microfilarii from the blood of infected individuals in order to prevent transmission to the mosquito. This is primarily accomplished through the use of drugs. The treatment for B. malayi infection is the same as for Bancroftian filariasis. Diethylcarbamazine has been used in mass treatment programs as an effective microfilaricidal drug in several locations including India. While diethylcarbamazine tends to cause adverse reactions like immediate fever and weakness, it is not known to cause any long-term adverse drug effects. It has been shown to kill both adult worms and microfilarii. In Malaysia, diethylcarbamazine dosages reduced microfilarii by 80% for 1824 months after treatment in the absence of mosquito control. Microfilarii numbers slowly return many months after treatment, thus requiring multiple drug doses over time in order to achieve long-term control. However, it is not known how many years of mass drug administration is required to eliminate transmission. There have been any confirmed cases of diethylcarbamazine resistance as of 2007. Lymphangitis Lymphedemia Secondary bacterial infection Laboratory diagnosis Single doses of two drugs have been shown to remove 99% of microfilarii for a year after treatment and help to improve elephantiasis during early stages of the disease. Ivermectin does not appear to kill adult worms but serves as a less toxic microfilaricide. Comparing genomes using C. elegans allowed for the identification of similar linkages in genes, the researchers found a genomic conservation with an absence of conservation at a more local gene level, 
this demonstrated that rearrangements had occurred over time between the C. elegans and B. malayi and allowed researchers to identify genes or proteins that were specific to B. malayi. These unique genes were significant because they could have led to the parasitism seen in B. malayi, and therefore are potential targets for future studies. Since the discovery of the importance of Wolbachia bacteria in the life cycle of B. malayi and other nematodes, novel drug efforts have targeted the endobacterium. Tetracyclines, rifampicin, and chloramphenicol have been effective in vitro by interfering with larvae molting and microfilarii development. Tetracyclines have been shown to cause reproductive and embryogenesis abnormalities in the adult worms, resulting in worm sterility. Clinical trials have demonstrated the successful reduction of Wolbachia and microfilarii in Oncocerciasis and W. Bancroft T. infected patients. These antibiotics, while acting through a slightly more indirect route, are promising antifilarial drugs. Secondary bacterial infection is often observed with lymphatic filariasis. Rigorous hygiene practices, including washing with soap and water daily and disinfecting wounds can help heal infected surfaces, and slow and potentially reverse existing tissue damage. Promoting hygiene is essential for lymphatic filariasis patients given the compromised immune and damaged lymphatic systems and can help prevent suffering and disability. There is currently no licensed vaccine to prevent lymphatic filariasis. However, recent research has produced vaccine candidates with good results in experimental animals. A glutathionase transferase a detoxification enzyme in parasites isolated from Cetaria cervi, a bovine filarial parasite, reduced B. malayi adult parasite burden by more than 82% for 90 days after treatment. Possible new drug targets include, molting, nuclear receptors, collagens and collagen processing, neuronal signaling, the B. malayi kinome, Reliance on host and endosymbiont metabolism. Vector control has been effective in virtually eliminating lymphatic filariasis in some regions, but vector control combined with chemotherapy produces the best results. It is suggested that 11 to 12 years of effective vector control may eliminate lymphatic filariasis. Successful methods of B. malayi vector control include residual house spraying using DDT and insecticide-treated bed nets. Manzonia larvae attach their breathing tubes to underwater roots and plants in order to survive. While chemical larvicides have only provided partial control, plant removal could prevent vector development, but also potential adverse effects on the aquatic environment. Lymphatic filariasis vector control is neglected in comparison to the far more established efforts to control malaria and dengue vectors. Integrated vector control methods should be applied in areas where the same mosquito species is responsible for transmitting multiple pathogens. B. malayi infects 13 million people in South and Southeast Asia and is responsible for nearly 10% of the world's total cases of lymphatic filariasis. B. malayi infection is endemic or potentially endemic in 16 countries, where it is most common in southern China and India, but it also occurs in Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, Malaysia, the Philippines, and South Korea. The distribution of B. malayi overlaps with W. Bancroft T in these regions, but does not coexist with B. timeri. Regional foci of endemicity are determined in part by the mosquito vectors. In 2007, scientists sequenced the genome of Brugia malayi. Identifying the genes of this organism might lead to development of new drugs and vaccines. Management and Therapy To decipher the genome, 
whole genome shotgun sequencing was performed. The genome was found to be approximately 90 to 95 megabases in size. The results of the sequencing were then compared to those of the reference nematode Sonorabditis elegans, along with its prototype Sonorabditis briggsi. These two free-living nematodes were incorporated in the study and were important for several reasons. Sequence comparisons between the two genomes allow for mapping of C. elegans orthologs to B. malayi genes. By using orthology mappings and incorporating the extensive genomic and functional genomic data, including genome-wide RNAi screens that already exist for C. elegans, potentially essential genes in B. malayi can be identified. Scientists are hoping to be able to target these genes as potential new targets for drug treatments. The longevity of this parasite complicates treatment because most existing drugs target the larvae and thus do not kill adult worms. The drugs often must be taken periodically for years and the worms can cause a massive immune reaction when they die and releases foreign molecules in the body. Drug treatments for filariasis have not changed significantly in over 20 years, and with the risk of resistance rising, there is an urgent need for the development of new antifilarial drug therapies. From the genome sequence, several metabolic pathways have been identified, containing dozens of gene products that may be helpful in the discovery of more targeted and effective drug therapies. These potential new targets for drugs or vaccines may provide new opportunities for understanding, treating and preventing elephantiasis. Drugs Hygiene Prevention Strategies the relationship between the Wolbachia bacteria and B. malayi is not fully understood. Extrapolating from research done with Wachereria bancrofti, another nematode that causes filariasis, Wolbachia may aid in embryogenesis of the worm, be responsible for potent inflammatory responses from macrophages and filarial disease and be linked to the onset of lyphedemia and blindness sometimes associated with B. malay eye infections. In a study done by the University of Bonn in Ghana, doxycycline effectively depleted Wolbachia from W. Bancroft T. It is likely that the mechanism of doxycycline is similar to that in other filarial species, i.e., a predominant blockade of embryogenesis leading to a decline of microfilariae according to their half-life. This could render doxycycline treatment an additional tool for the treatment of microfilaria-associated diseases in Bancroftian filariasis, along with B. malay ifr yashas. The course of treatment with doxycycline could be much shorter as it would make the adult worm sterile in one shot rather than repeatedly have to target the replenished larvae that current treatments kill, and there would be fewer side effects for the infected individual. Another hopeful use for the research is in the area of transplant research. Because the B. malay I genome is the first parasitic genome to have been sequenced, the implications on the mechanism of parasitism in humans are crucial to understand. According to Alan L. Scott, Ph.D., a collaborator at Johns Hopkins University, understanding how a particular parasite, such as B. malayi, can adapt to humans, may yield medical benefits far beyond treating elephantiasis. According to the author, this worm can reside in the host for years and not necessarily cause disease, in fact the less disease the individual has, the more worms there are in circulation. Now that we know those genes don't exist in humans we can target them to control disease. Some of the predicted proteins for these new genes appear similar to known immunomodulator proteins, regulators of the immune system suggesting that they are involved in deactivating the host's immune system to ensure the parasite remains undetected. 
Knowledge of these previously unknown immune suppressors could also be of use in organ transplants and to help treat autoimmune disease. According to the Filarial Genome Project being done by the Special Program for Research and Training in Tropical Diseases, the Brugia Malay IMIF gene is expressed in all life cycle stages of the parasite, and results suggest that B. Malay IMIF may interact with the human immune system during the course of infection by altering the function of macrophages in the infected individual. Studies are currently testing the hypothesis that MIF may be involved in reducing the host's immune response to the microfilarii. Understanding how this particular parasite has adapted to humans may help organ transplant researchers by figuring out how to prevent the immune system from attacking the transplanted tissue. The genomic information may yield a better understanding of which genes are important for different processes in the parasite's life cycle. It may be possible to target these genes more specifically and interrupt its life cycle. Understanding how this particular parasite has adapted to humans may yield medical benefits far beyond treating elephantiasis, says collaborator Alan L. Scott, Ph.D., of the Bloomberg School of Public Health at Johns Hopkins University. Parasitic worms are a lot like foreign tissue that has been transplanted into the human body. But unlike baboon hearts or pig kidneys, which the immune system quickly recognizes as foreign and rejects, worms can survive for years in the body. Discovering how they do so may someday benefit transplant surgery, explained Dr. Scott. Vaccines Vector control Epidemiology Genome deciphered Potential for new drugs to treat B. malayi Endosymbiotic relationship with Wolbachia Genome use in transplant research Overall hope for the use of the genome sequencing